This is a liquid metal called Galenstan. It seems pretty lifeless sitting here in my hand, but give it the right conditions and it comes alive. Whoa! What in the world? That is crazy! Today I'm going to be showing you an amazing chemical reaction that turns lifeless metals into a form that seems to be alive. I'm even going to be checking to see if these pseudo life forms can solve a maze. Over 2,000 years ago, ancient alchemists discovered something extraordinary hiding in these bright red rocks known as cinnabar. When these rocks are heated, they release a silvery liquid they called quicksilver. We know it today as mercury. Mercury has been known for centuries as a metal that's liquid at room temperature. It used to be used in everything from thermometers to barometers and even taken as medicine. But fortunately for us, after the discovery that mercury is extremely toxic, we have an alternative that's much less toxic, but still a liquid metal at room temperature. It's a mixture of gallium, indium, and tin. Surprisingly, when you mix all three of these metals together that are solids at room temperature, they make a liquid. But this isn't even the coolest part. Watch what happens when I drop it in this solution here. It seems to come alive. It spreads out like a worm and then suddenly contracts back to a spherical shape. And this process can repeat over and over again. Somehow we seem to have made this metal come alive. Look at it writhing all over the petri dish. This is so cool. But why is this happening? Well, to see what's happening, first let's start with just a drop of Galenstan. You can see that it forms a pretty tight sphere here. This is due to its high surface tension that's trying to make the least surface area possible, which is a sphere. But now I'm going to drop some crystals of cupric chloride on it and a little water. See how it just drops flat? This is because the gallium in the Galenstan is reacting with copper ions and the cupric chloride. This is forming copper that quickly reacts with oxygen in the water to form copper oxide particles. That's this black stuff on the surface. These copper oxide particles attract water, so this lowers the surface tension on the surface of the gallium, so it spreads out. But watch what happens when I add some hydrochloric acid to it. The metallic blob suddenly pops back into a sphere again, and the black copper oxide disappears. So the hydrogen chloride reacted with the copper oxide, turning it back into copper ions again. Now if we don't do it step by step and instead just put the acid and the galenstan and the copper chloride all in a solution together, that's where the magic happens. So you have these three competing reactions all happening at the same time. The reason that the metal forms these snake-like fingers like this is that whenever you have a droplet with a given surface tension, there's a pressure inside the bubble or droplet called the Laplace pressure. Now let's say that I suddenly have an area on this drop that has lower surface tension. What happens? Well, the lower surface tension area deforms more than the higher surface tension area, and the Galenstan is pushed into that lower surface tension area. So it's almost like it's ballooning out at the areas at lower surface tension. So the fingers happen from uneven surface tension across the drop. I first saw this reaction on a channel called Tommy Technetium. And ever since I saw it, I wanted to see if we could make these metal drops solve a maze if we made a concentration gradient of chloride ions for the metal to follow. For example, if I just put some drops of Galenstan in acid, they beat up. But then if I put the copper chloride crystals in here, then the drops of Galenstan follow and consume the crystals. This is so cool. It literally looks like there's some type of sea creature eating food on the surface. This movement is all due to the constantly changing surface tension that drives the metal drops toward the crystals. This is because of an effect called the Marangoni effect, where flow goes from regions of low surface tension to high surface tension. So you can literally see flow that throws the surface particles off the back. And new liquid needs to fill that volume so the bulk drop moves in the direction of low surface tension. This happens in bursts, so it almost looks like jellyfish or something. So let's see if I make a maze for these mini jellyfish so they can actually get to the end of it. But before we continue, if you regularly watch my videos, then you know there's two things that I love, magnets and gravity. So I have to show these awesome high-end hover pens by Novium who sponsored this video. 
Right here I have Novium's Hover Pen Interstellar Edition. It's an amazing tribute to space, physics, and innovation. This pen uses magnets to hover in its dock at a precise 23.5 degree angle, which as you know is the same axial tilt of the Earth that gives us our changing seasons. The Interstellar Edition is available in all our favorite space-themed colors, like Space Black, Starlight Silver, Mars Magma, and Neptune Blue. And what's really cool is if you're looking for something really amazing, there's even a premium 18 karat gold plated version that includes an actual meteorite shard. These hover pens aren't just stylish, but they're refillable and also provide an unmatched writing experience. They come in super high end packaging that really highlights the quality of the pen. They're an amazing combination of art and space. The Interstellar Edition was named one of Time Magazine's best inventions of 2022. And in addition to the Interstellar version, they also have the Hover Pen Future Edition. These pens are the ultimate in high-end design and functionality. Right now you can get 10% off and free shipping with the discount code ACTIONLAB when you scan the QR code or click the link in the description. And thanks again for Novium for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to our experiment. Okay, first I'll put some hydrochloric acid in here. Then I'm going to lay down my gradient of copper ions. Okay, let's see if the gallon can actually find the end of the maze. It's going. This little guy's going for it. This is so cool, it looks like they're alive. Look at their specific movement in these bean shapes. You can see the copper oxide forming and then getting pushed to the back due to the Marangoni effect. Then it slowly dissolves. Oh, it got lost up here. <laughs> I think it ran out of gallium. Also, you can see brown colors as well. This is the gallon stand forming copper metal. And it made it. What's interesting is that this reaction is very similar to a reaction I did a few years ago in a video called the Beating Heart Experiment. In this reaction, I put some gallium in sulfuric acid, and then I touched it with a piece of iron. When the gallium is placed in the acid, a thin layer of gallium sulfate forms. This changes the surface tension and causes it to beat into a tighter sphere. Then when it touches the iron, this creates a reverse reaction turning the gallium sulfide back into gallium, causing the bead to relax. As the gallium bead moves away from the iron, it reacts with the sulfuric acid again to reform gallium sulfate. This restarts the cycle, so it just goes back and forth between these two states. This one's really cool because it literally looks like a speeding beating heart. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab, I hope you learned something. If you haven't subscribed yet, remember to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time.